Meg is sporting her um, specially designed GoPro mount on her back. It's a nice cool day today, so let's see what they get up to. Prickly affair. Oh, I think it got away. I was just trying to dig it out. And that was a close call for the porcupine, but uh, thankfully, whew, he got away. You saw the, the, the mode that she was in, she was very much uh, in hunt mode, and it takes a while before they, they snap out of it. Maybe in the interim, we can do a hashtag ask Meg question. One of the questions that's come in. Um, is actually a pretty good question. Why should we protect lions? You know, what, what's the function? Why, why are they so critical? Um, like, who cares if lions disappear? What, what impact is it gonna have? And there are two reasons, uh, two real main reasons as to why lions should be protected. Uh, the first is obviously they are an intricate uh, part of, an, of the ecology. And uh, their, their purpose is to control uh, prey populations. So without um, predators such as lions in an area, prey populations just get out of hand. Um, they also help control the movement of prey populations. So if there's no predators such as lions in an area, the, the prey can just do uh, whatever they want. They can graze wherever they want. And they have no need or inclination to move off areas. So there's a real possibility, and it's happened in many uh, parks and places where there aren't lions, um, preying on the, the herbivore populations where uh, the herbivore species just simply overgraze an area and they change its ecology completely whereby uh, trees that normally would have been able to recover and rejuvenate uh, are killed off and grass species die off. So the, as soon as you reintroduce the predators then uh, the prey is always on the lookout and the prey has to move off depending on where the predators are. So the, the predators have a very um, important role to play in the ecology and then reason number two would be in today's day and age where uh, by we actually rely a lot on tourism and on people coming to areas to protect eco um, ecosystems um, the money that it obviously generates is, is really important we know in Africa everyone's hell bent on seeing the big five so lion is one of the big five and uh, if lion were to be uh, to become extinct, um, you know, people are probably going to lose interest in, in wanting to visit uh, certain areas. So there's a high demand for people to see uh, these iconic predators in, in these natural habitats. Uh, but purely, as I say, from an ecological perspective, which has nothing to do with human wants or wishes, uh, they, they have an integral part to play. And I think it's a lot more complicated than we would like to think. So thanks for that question. That's a really good question. It's a thoughtful question. Um, and yeah, I hope that answers, um, answers that. I can honestly say that walking out in the bush with Meg and Amy um, is absolutely rejuvenating. After a long hard week, you know, just to walk out in the wilderness, um, most of the time in peace and quiet and solitude, it's pretty, pretty awesome. One of uh, the questions that's come through in hashtag Ask Meg, and it's actually a, a frequently asked question, so I'm going to answer it, is what is Megan and Amy's favorite food. Um, oh boy, do they have so many. They have so many favorite meals. I can uh, say that Warthog is definitely 
up there. Uh, they do also love porcupine. Um, obviously the meat there is quite tasty, otherwise they wouldn't continually uh, go for them. Um, and another, another favorite is horse. Um, obviously the horse meat we get is very similar to zebra and um, yeah, they, they um, eat that feverishly when they, when they do get a chance. So here is Maggie getting a sip of water. So the lions, when they drink, they have these spiny processes on their tongue called papilla. And uh, the papilla act almost like a sponge in many respects. To dip that tongue in there and flick it back and squeeze it in the in the throat, they got little ridges on the on the palate. Helps also direct and flow. That enables the lions to drink. Unlike a dog, it actually just laps. The question that's also commonly asked is, do lions purr um, like like cheetah? Um, and the answer is no. The lions don't have a bifurcated hyoid bone. It's all to do with this bone in the throat. And uh, that adaptation doesn't allow them to purr. So you might hear lions making sounds that sound like purring, but it's not purring. It's been a lovely walk with them today. Not too eventful. Started off quite interesting in the early stages with a, an attempted porcupine hunt. Thanks to all you guys out there. Uh, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. And share, share, share. So until next time, keep well. Ciao.